What's going on YouTube? So the Mercedes GLC has long been Mercedes' best-selling vehicle, and for good reason. It competes in the very popular compact luxury crossover segment, and combines tons of luxury and technology that people are craving. Now for the latest 2022 example, Mercedes is upping the ante with even more standard equipment. But without wasting any time, let's go ahead and get right into this review and see if this is still one of the best options in the class. So a new model of the GLC will be on the horizon in the next year or two. That does mean that this current generation is going to stay mostly the same in terms of visuals. So what we have today is the GLC 43 AMG model. That of course is going to be uh, the most aggressive version of the standard uh, GLC. And as you can see that does change the grill up a little bit. All the GLCs though are going to have this same shape, but we do have these special bars which of course make it look kind of like a full-fledged AMG, although this is the 43 model. Of course, the lower area is going to be very aggressive as well. And we have the AMG Knight package on this particular model, which is going to add this blacked out uh, elements down here at the bottom, as well as right through here. Now, as far as your headlights, of course, as you expect for a luxury product, we are going to have standard LED headlights. However, um, new for 2022, we have standard auto high beams. So that's a nice addition. We also have the adaptive headlights on this model, which are optional, and that does give this a slightly different look. Now across the GLC lineup, you do have plenty of different wheel options, but we have the best looking, in my opinion, options when you go for the 43 AMG model. We have the optional 21 inch alloy wheels, and I think these look fantastic. As you can see, it's got a really precise look to it, a lot of spokes, and we have a contrasting gray finish inside of it. And as you move on beyond the wheels, of course, you're going to see your bi-turbo badge for the uh, engine, which we'll talk about, of course, when we get to that section. And then our mirrors, blacked out with the night package. Uh, they're fully loaded as well, so you have standard blind spot monitoring, heating, auto dimming, and power folding. Now let's go ahead and talk about the side as well as the length of the Mercedes-Benz GLC. We're looking at an overall length of 183.8 inches, which is right on par with that of the rest of the segment. And as far as some of the design elements, you will notice that everything's going to be blacked out since we do have that AMG night package. So all of our window surrounds as well as the roof rails up top are going to be that piano black finish. Now coming around to the rear design of this model, um, even though this is really not like the freshest product on the block. I still think this is one of the best looking uh, luxury crossovers out there because it just has a very tasteful, elegant look. And especially if you add on this AMG uh, engine and packaging, it does spice up the design a little bit more. So let's talk about some of the design elements. We do have an exposure wiper right here. And then you have your Mercedes emblem in the middle. And then let's check out these taillights. These taillights are very premium taillights. Um, they were updated with the refresh and they are going to be full LED on every single model. So that includes all of your accenting, your brake light, your turn signal, as well as your reverse light. And then dropping down to the lower area, this is where it's going to all change for the AMG model. So we're going to have a more aggressive diffuser area. As you can see, you have all of this like lower splitter area. And then you're going to have the quad exhaust outlets. The Mercedes, the GLC 300 would have fake exhaust outlets, but this is going to throw in the real quad exhaust system, which looks a lot better. We also have the optional performance exhaust system. So let's go ahead and take a listen to that. Now let's discuss the safety systems as well as the warranty information for the Mercedes GLC. So as far as your safety systems, we do have some updates for 2022. So in addition to forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, you will now have standard auto high beam headlamps, which is of course a nice touch. Now, if you want the other two safety systems, you will have to go for the driver assistance package, which will further throw in your lane keeping assist as well as the adaptive cruise control system. 
Now, as far as your warranty information is concerned, you will have Mercedes-Benz's standard warranty. It's gonna be a four-year, 50,000-mile basic warranty and powertrain warranty, no complimentary maintenance. But guys, here on the outside, you can tell this GLC is a very classy and elegant look. Now let's go ahead and get in the interior where I know there's a lot of luxury before we take it out in a spin. So walking up to this GLC, of course you do have a standard smart entry system. You can also remote start from the Mercedes app. And to get inside, just grab behind the handle. Of course, this generation of the GLC has always had a very nicely finished cabin, and that does continue for 2022. But of course, as always, let's start off by talking about our different interior material and color choices. So we actually have the standard option for today's GLC. Uh, that's going to be an MB Tex leatherette seat with the suede Alcantara insert here. So as you can see, a nice looking seat, nice bolsters here. I do like how grippy this uh, Alcantara is. It feels pretty soft as well. Of course, you can get real leather um, in a variety of different stitching combinations, a bunch of different colors. You know, if you know one thing about German luxury vehicles is that they're very reconfigurable to whatever you want. Now, as we turn over here to the seat controls, they're of course located up here on the door trim. Um, standard on the GLC is actually gonna be a very well adjusted uh, seat. You have 14 ways of power adjustment, including a power thigh extension. You also have a power headrest, which is pretty cool. And we do have standard three stage heated seats. Ventilation is available as an extra cost option and standard memory seats as well. Well, let's go ahead and kind of start talking about our material quality inside of the cabin itself. So starting with the door trim. Wonderful uh, leather that runs all through here with the stitching detail, cross stitch that runs up through there. You're gonna notice a lot of uh, this really nice open pour, I believe it's walnut trim. Looks and feels quite nice. We have a leatherette trim that runs across the upper part of the door. And here on the GLC 43, we also have that same leatherette that runs across the upper dashboard as well with the stitching details. As we come down, we have a real aluminum accent. It's gonna be padded plastic through there. And then of course, one of the signature elements of this generation has always been this waterfalling uh, console here with all of it finished in that uh, nice open pour wood as well as the leatherette along the outside edges. Now to start it up, put your foot on the brake and press the standard button. So right off the bat here, let's go ahead and talk about these gauges. You've seen these before if you've watched any previous reviews of the GLC. However, there is an update for 2022. That's the fact that this 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster is now standard on the GLC 43 model, which is of course what we have today. So you don't have to pay any extra for that option for this trim level anymore. Of course, just like uh, with other Mercedes reconfigurable, reconfigurable gauge clusters, excuse me, uh, you can change the designs overall and also update each section with its own individual kind of information. Furthermore, uh, there would be an available head-up display. We don't have it on this specific example, though. Now pulling back here to the steering wheel with the 43 model, we do get the aggressive AMG steering wheel, which is one of my favorite steering wheels in the entire auto industry. I love the flat bottom design. I love how thick the uh, side rims are. You got the perforated leather, real metal trim throughout here. Um, just a really, really nice steering wheel to hold on to. Large paddle shifters that are made of real metal as well. Um, as far as the wheel itself, so it is gonna be power adjusting. As standard equipment, we do have optional heating for $250. But let's go ahead and check interior storage next, because this still has to be practical. Opening up our center console, it does have that split design. And looking inside there, we have a pretty decent amount of space. Uh, nice felt lining inside of it as well. And we've got a couple USB ports. Trying to put it to the test though. Let's stick those coupons in there. Looks like it's gonna fit just fine. Um, it takes up just about the entire thing. Up in front of that, of course, you've got your little controller here with a bunch of buttons. Um, and then we do have a little bit more storage up here. You can slide your phone uh, back on that. I believe that can be a wireless phone charging pad, though it is not on this specific model. And then we do have a 12 volt outlet as well with those two cup holders. 
Now, of course, just like pretty much every Mercedes, no shifter down here. It's gonna be located up here on the column. So you're gonna pull down for drive. Again, you do have these real metal paddle shifters, which feel really, really fantastic. And then heading into reverse, uh, you'll be greeted with either a standard backup camera, or in this case, we have opted on the optional 360 degree camera system. So as you can see, we've got both our 360 view as well as our traditional view. We have active trajectory. We've got a few different uh, views that we can switch between. And of course you have front and rear parking sensors as well. And then for park, just press the end of the stock there and you do have an electronic parking brake on the left side of the steering wheel. Now we're turning down to here. Most of the buttons down here are related to drive modes and different drive settings because you have a lot of customizability with the 43 model. Um, however, of course, you do have a volume knob and that's for your audio system. So let's go ahead and take a sample. Yeah, so overall sound quality of this system is pretty nice. Of course, you can also option on a 13 speaker Burmester sound system if you prefer. Now moving on up the dashboard, you have a row of buttons there for a few different settings. We also have our row of climate controls. So we've got the standard dual zone automatic climate control set up on this model. When you make those adjustments, it appears up there in the main display. And then additional functions can be located by pressing the menu, and that's where you can make all of those adjustments right there. And let's go ahead and talk about the display. So back when this was refreshed in uh, 2020, it got upgraded to this 10 and a quarter inch display. So let me get a little closer there so you can see it. Um, as you can tell, it is the tablet style, so it kind of just floats out here on the console. Really nice resolution, it's running the latest and greatest MBUX system, so you can change to different themes and have a plenty of different functionality, of course. On this model, we do have the optional navigation system, so there's what that looks like. We also have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities with a wired connection. Now heading on up here, we do have a frameless auto dimming mirror, three Homelink Universal remotes built into it. Got a nice sunglass holder. Obviously, all the interior lighting here is going to be LED. And then up at the top, this will be our panoramic sunroof. As you can see, it is a dual panel setup. So the front and the back both have power sunshades. The front portion does open up and this is a $1,500 option. All right, guys, come join me in this luxury vehicle's rear area. Now this, of course, is a GLC. So even though it has that AMG badge on the back, you're still gonna have a really, really nice second row area. A lot of luxury, a lot of space. So let's go ahead and talk about that space figure first. We're looking at 37.3 inches of rear legroom, 39.6 inches of rear headroom. That does place it right on par with its competition. Uh, the BMW X3, the Audi Q5, all of those cars are gonna have nearly identical legroom figures. It is around three inches smaller than the Mercedes GLE though, if you're cross shopping between that. Um, I'm five foot nine, this is Drew's seating position. He's five foot eight for reference. And you know, you see we have about six inches between my knees and the seat back and my feet are very comfortable sliding up underneath of the seat. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the features that Mercedes is gonna throw in here in the center. <clears throat> so every single model is going to come standard with rear vents. As you see here, they're a nice really chrome venting here. Um, you can get optional climate controls. This particular model does not have that. We also do not have the optional heated rear seats that are available. If we drop down below that, we have a household style outlet off to the left side. On the right side, we have a 12 volt outlet and those are newly standard. And then we do have this center armrest. If we push this button, that reveals this whole area. It's nicely felt lined. We can stick some coupons in there. So I'm definitely happy to see that. Cup holders that pop out um, right here in the end. And then let's look at our door trim heading over of course this is a luxury vehicle we got leather on the top part open pour wood more leather nice leather armrest and bottle holders down in the bottom 
All right, so come on up and let's look at the tailgate area of the GLC. Now, for this model, you're gonna have a standard hands-free power tailgate, so that's definitely a nice feature to have. So just wave your foot under the bumper to open it up. And as you can see, it does have a sensor right nice in the middle that works every single time. So that's something that some brands don't do super well. Now, as far as the space itself in the GLC's cargo department, we're looking at 19 cubic feet of cargo capacity behind the second row seats. If we fold those seats down, you're gonna have 56.5 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Um, I do wanna point out that the seats are 40-20-40 split folding. So that does give you that av availability of sliding something up the middle and you do have the still the four seats in the car so that's definitely a nice feature to see. Um, as far as how that compares to its competition, that's right around average for the X3 and Audi Q5 in terms of cargo capacity. Now, let's talk about our features, though. This is a luxury vehicle. It's a Mercedes, after all. So we do have a really nice carpeting along the floor. We have a beautiful handle to lift it up. And when we do, there is a spare tire up underneath the floor. That's a $200 option. And then off to the side, you are going to notice we have some LED lighting, we have a cargo cover, and then you have all these switches here. Um, a lot of these are just to fold the seats down. This is to uh, lower the suspension here. And then we also have a 12 volt power outlet. Now for our passenger seat, we are going to have the same adjustments as the driver. So if you look over here on the door trim, we have Hella adjustments, guys. Look at all these adjustments. We even have the power thigh extension. We have a power headrest adjustment. Literally anything you want, you're gonna have that availability. We also have the four-way lumbar support here on the seat itself, plus three-person memory for the passenger side as well. Now, as far as the glove box is concerned, we do have a really nice one. Um, this is gonna be a good size glove box. I'm pleasantly surprised to see how big it is. You know, if you want your Hardee's coupons, they can fit easily up in here. We got it nicely fell lined. Then up top, we do have a sun visor. We have a smallish mirror. We also have some lighting up top and we can detach the visor. However, we're not gonna have any extensions in the end. Of power on board with this um, since we're upgraded to the AMG enhanced 3 liter twin turbo V6 engine, 385 horsepower, 384 pound feet of torque. Yeah, and uh, you can really feel that. I mean, especially the torque, it really pushes you back in the seat when you put that foot down. Obviously the regular GLC 300 is really no slouch, but this is uh, quite an advantage over that uh, model for sure. Yeah, so for the 300, that's what most people end up getting if you get a GLC, which of course, like Drew said, there's nothing wrong with that powertrain. We've been in that several times. It's actually way quicker than what you would think. That has 255 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. Um, so you can do the math on that. It's a little about 125, 130 horsepower difference between that model and this one. Um, but it really is just going to be up to you whether you need that performance or not. You can also probably tell that this model is going to sound a little bit better than a regular GLC 300. It has a lot of really nice noises penetrating the cabin. Now, as I mentioned on the outside, we do have the performance exhaust on this particular model. So that does kind of amplify that noise up to give you that maximum sound that you want. And uh, it's actually not on right now. That was just the standard sound. So. Um, we'll talk a little bit more here, but when we take back off, I'll put it in Sport Plus with the um, uh, variable exhaust on. That way you can get that maximum sound here. <laughs> That's even better. Yeah. That exhaust is nasty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
that sounds really, really good. <laughs> Yeah, really nice, really nice. Um, I should talk about the transmission. You've got the uh, nine-speed automatic transmission on board with this. Really nice and fast shifts, as you can see, really crisp. It snaps those shifts off and you get that nice kind of backfire sound from the exhaust. Uh, on the sticker, they call this speed shift. Yeah, I don't know it's if fast. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not, that's not BS, <laughs> it's pretty fast. <laughs> Now, of course, we do have the 4Matic all-wheel drive system. On the regular GLC, you can get um, rear-wheel drive if you don't need the 4Matic system, unlike something like an Audi Q5. And as far as the fuel economy on this 43 model, you're looking at 18 city, 25 highway, 21 miles a gallon combined. Um, is, if you're looking to compare that to the regular 300, that's going to be coming in at 24 miles a gallon combined. So only a 3 mpg reduction for going for this motor, um, which yeah. I really don't think is going to detour, detour like many people from just like getting this motor. It's not going to cost you that much more at the pump. Is it detour? Is that a word? Detour? I don't know. Deter. Deter is what <laughs> I was trying to call it. Yeah. Deter, like detour, like I was uh, like, to, a road like a road has a detour on it. I was <laughs> deter is D E T E R. That's what I was trying. To detour. I mixed the two. <laughs> I was like confused. I knew I, I knew it wasn't right. When I... <laughs> All right, but we're on our way out to just the highway section, and this is where I want to talk about. One of our favorite elements about anything in this segment, and that's just the dual character of having one of these. This is a GLC at heart. It just has a really awesome motor strap to it, and they do a lot of you know different characteristics to make it more sporty and such, but it's still a GLC, and it rides exceptionally well. The seats are comfortable. You got a really nice just overall experience. Um, the GLC's experience is not really worsened at all. You just add the extra elements for going for this 43. And speaking of that, uh, it's time to you know take a sound level reading. So I'll go ahead and put us into comfort mode. Like if you were just driving around town, turn that off. It's off now. Yeah. All right. Fifty-six point two is our sound level reading. That's a very solid reading um, for this segment. I think most of the competitors test right at that figure so even having this bigger motor is really not going to um, make you penalize you <laughs> once again no penalties for going for this 43 right and the the ride quality on this is just spectacular like Mason was saying we've got an adaptive suspension for the 43 model so you can put it in sport mode things will firm up give you all those you know the dynamics that you want when you're canyon carving you've got the nice firm steering stuff like that but if you're in comfort mode like this you're just cruising down the highway super comfortable takes a bump well um, it's, it's really very nicely done slam dunk I think since we're talk we're here specifically with the 43 of course there's lots of strong elements for the GLC but with the 43 it's all about that performance and that sound and that's today's slam dunk now our air ball is going to go along with that this is not exactly a cheap vehicle um, by any means really you wouldn't expect that uh, but even so this GLC 43 is more expensive than its chief competitor the X3 M40i we've been in several of those most of the ones that we were doing were around 64 65,000 this particular tester which is really missing quite a few options is still looking at almost 70 grand so uh, this is just a little bit more expensive than even some of those German competitors now like I mentioned this is a pretty lightly optioned model um, we <laughs> lightly optioned for Mercedes I will say but there's still about 500 options on here um, when we add in the $1,050 destination charge this particular tester as equipped is 68 860 
But overall, it's easy to see why the GLC has been such a popular product for Mercedes. Um, you just have such a well-rounded package in here. You've got that space, you've got that family capability, you've got lots of luxury, plenty of technology. And then when you add that 43, that secret sauce on top of that, this is really just a spectacular overall package that can kind of be both sporty and super family oriented. Well guys, thanks so much for watching this in-depth review of the 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLC. If you found this video helpful in your purchasing decisions, please hit that subscribe button down below. We would really appreciate it. It also helps give us opportunities to show you all better content. So it's really a circular thing. Please tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive ducks.